What's up, everybody? It's your boy Isaiah in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And I'm here with my comrade, my bodyguard, my big unk, big Nate dog over here as usual. Yes. And little, Nate, little Nate dog down. Little, he's my side. Little, little Nate dog. Little Nate dog down. Yeah. Little Nate dog. Well, big and, and y'all, for those that are listening, y'all hear another voice in here. That is the man himself, Mr. Larry Brown, Mr. MVP, Dallas Cowboy, straight out of L.A., Cali, baby. Representing Cali. California, IA. Got you, baby. Representing TCU. <laughs> rocking them, them horn right, frogs. That's right, baby. My frog's doing good. And, uh, wow. and the, there was a time in my career where I couldn't mention TCU. Yeah. The boys yeah. gave me a hard time. So <laughs> I'm, I'm riding it out right now. I'm yeah. enjoying every minute of it. That's so what's your record? We undefeated, baby. Wow. TCU undefeated right now. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. whoever y'all beat, the fan views of the world? We, we, it, don't, we, we, it don't matter, huh? It don't, it don't matter. Whoever's on the schedule, right? <laughs> whoever's on the schedule. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's awesome, man. Well, how you doing, man? I am blessed, man. You know, um, we're here, and I, I have no complaints, and we living, and we're getting through COVID, and yeah. so I, I'm not going to complain about anything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. what, what was your reaction when Mr. Nate Dog texted you? He was like, hey, man, we need you to come on. Let me man, tell you something. Look, anytime Nate hit me, it's all good. You know, yeah. That's my man. I love Nate, and I uh, love Michelle, his wife, so... It's no brainer. I'm there. It's okay. not it. You know, it's never an issue. What can you tell us about Nate that the people don't know? Well, I'll say Nate. Nate's a comedian. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. Nate's, Nate's a comedian. Yeah. Um, wow. I would tell you this: when we had we had a little basketball team called the Hoopsters back in the yes, day. Yes, we did. And all the big guys wanted to play point. Ah. And they want all the little guys down in the post. And <laughs> get in the paint. Huh? You get in the paint. We want to bring it up. They shoot threes. But uh, no, nah, uh, just great. Per- I'll say Nate's a great person, man. He's always uh, built relationships and cared about his teammates. And yeah. everybody loves him. And I mean, that's what it's about. You weren't just some guy on his team. You know, you meant more than that. That means a lot to me. I'm, I'm going to tell you. Uh, let me tell you. But I need to stop with that. No, we no. Stay with that. it. That's let what it is. You. It's real. This is. I saw Larry at uh, Charles Hayden mm-hmm. tackle tackle for tomorrow. Yep. Uh, charity, and I thought about it, and you know, I saw Big E. I saw a bunch of guys. I'm like, you know what? Let me call Larry. Just out of, you know, just think. Let me call Larry. See what he do this he, right away, man. Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm gonna do it. So. But one thing that you're gonna get with Larry is you're gonna get the real. Now he's gonna be politically correct, <laughs> but you're gonna get the real. Yeah. And yeah. the thing about about him. If you and this started before the show, if you mention any way to make money, he got a thousand ideas. Absolutely, <laughs> Absolutely. he got a thousand ideas on how to make money. I love it. I yeah. love it. We, we definitely. I, I had a mentor that. told me this a long time ago about money. He said money is like cars on the freeway; they're going back and forth. You got to learn how to get in front of it to get hit by the car. That's it. <laughs> there you go. The money going. There you back go. And playing forth. Frogger. With you or without you, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 how can I get hit by that? <laughs> I, I like it. I like it, man. Like well, man, it. well, take it. Take us back, man, to the upbringing. You gave us a little bit of rundown of who who Mr. LB is, straight out of California. Man, I grew up in Cali, South Central Los Angeles. Um, uh, loved it there. Obviously, back in the day, gang violence, everything yep. else. So. You know, my mom wanted me to leave at that time. I had a lot of friends got murdered when I was in high school. She's like, look, you just got to do something different. Don't go to school here, Yeah, whatever you do. So I uh, ended up visiting TCU. had a, a guy named Charlie Williams. Uh, at that time, every school didn't recruit nationally. There were a few. But um, he said, hey, TCU at that time wanted to start bringing more kids in from other states. It's kind of prevalent now, but back then they didn't. Right. And I uh, ended up liking it. They said, hey, man, you know, We'll give you a chance to play. If you can play young, we'll let you play. Because when I came out back then, they didn't let young guys play. Got you. you know? Now, were you just playing one sport at the time? Well, I grew up, I, play, I ran track, played a little basketball. I wasn't good at basketball, but okay. ran track, football, uh, played baseball one you year. That's why we actually the, the post up. Yeah, yeah. I, I got hit with a, base, with a fastball, quit baseball. Shut it down. Hit, shut, shut it down. down. Yeah. I didn't want to get hit like that no more. <laughs> wow. So, um, and, but went to TCU, enjoyed it, man. Uh, loved Texas, loved the school. It was small. It was it was uh, good for me. We didn't win a lot. Yeah. Like I said I never went to a bowl game okay. wow. and, or anything. So now, was that your first time wearing purple? That's the question. No, well, my first time. Okay, well, you uh-huh. wore purple before that. Yeah. So I grew up and uh, I played little league football in Hawthorne, California. Okay. Right. And ironically, on my little league team, we had seven dudes make it to the NFL. Ooh, wow. Curtis Conway, Glenn Oof. Milburn, myself. Glenn went to Stanford. So. You know, and our go- our colors were purple and gold. I like it. Wow. That's, I, was, I said that's how you dug oh, right there. Jamel that's what I'm Holloway, talking about. You see that? He was older than us. Yeah. Jamel, 
played, was always old enough, so we idolized Jamel. So we all came through the little same park system. Okay. And just following those guys there. So yeah. So, so you so you really should have went to the University of Washington if you like that purple and gold. You know so what? Much. Back then I had some bunch of boys go there. Bean O'Brien back yeah, in the day. Yeah. Uh my boy Napoleon Kaufman. Yeah. Lincoln Kennedy. So be, okay. we did in Cali at that time. It was all about USC and UCLA. Mm. You, people didn't really go to Oregon that much. They didn't want to lead the state. They didn't want to lead the state. And so we knew Washington was always a good program. Mm -hmm. But it was like, you know, they said it rained a lot down there. Uh, I don't know if yeah. it did or not. But yeah. It's, but you, all your mother knew is that you had to lead the She state. wanted to get out of California. During that time, gang violence was rampant. Right. Crack cocaine was just probably at its peak wow. and coming in. So she's like, look, you know, just do something different. Get out so the area. Get out the area. Because had I went to UCLA, USC, you got your friends, your homeboys, they on campus because you home. So it, and it was the best decision I made. And that's so common, though. I know for at least a lot of you know single parents, I'm not sure if you had a, both single parents. Single parent, yep. yep. So a lot of single parents in the house, you know, during that time, at least during, even in my time, my yeah. mom, when it came to middle school, there's a middle school in our neighborhood. We grew up in the hood, too. And Seattle was, <laughs> Seattle was rough, in at least my area. Right, right. And there was a, a, high, a middle school called Washington Middle School. Right. Okay? And it was literally... Three, four blocks away from the house, and it was the it was the the no brainer pick in terms of going there in terms of convenience. But my mom said, "Nah, she got with all the moms in the neighborhood and all our my, all my friends that that were that were paired up with me. All the parents got together and sent us to a middle school on the top of the hill on Queen Anne, all right. the way up that looks down on Seattle. Yeah, right. And she was like, "Y'all going up to this alternative school because have you had we sent you to uh, Washington Middle School, you'd have been in a bunch of mess." Absolutely, right. and I would say this for us too. There were so many great. Athletes I grew up around could play, yeah. end up becoming drug dealers or gang yeah. members, and they were better than everybody. Yep. But they decided to go that route, and I think my mom realized we don't want you guys going to the streets doing those things. Let me ask you this question, man. What, what, humble. You, you've you always been humble. I mean, even with conflicts, if you come at Larry and he see it ain't no gain, he humbled himself. Well, where that humbleness come from? You know, I think we're all blessed, Nate, and, and I've always appreciated – the power of sport for me, you know, the people you get a chance to meet, the things you get to do. It's not just a game when you have the relationships. Yep. So uh, it's like a dream. And then for me, more importantly, is I've lived a dream. If you were to tell me that a little knucklehead from South Central would beat the drugs, beat the gangs, yep. go to college. I was the first right. in my family nice. to go to college. Right. All three of my kids have all gone to college Absolutely. now. Absolutely. But I was the first. Now You broke, you broke the cycle. But understand what that means. It's 2022. Yep. And I'm the first. Wow. So that cycle got broke. So when you look at all the things, uh, going to the Cowboys, a 12-round draft pick, not supposed to make the team, mm -hmm. you know, end up starting as a rookie. Yeah. Jimmy threatened so, his life. Mm -hmm. uh, threatened my life. Well, no, Jimmy used manipulation <laughs> on me. He manipulated <laughs> my life, yeah. But um, just all those things, man, like, you know, you're like, wow. You know, so you already won. You won when you made out them streets. You won when you went to college. You won when you made the team. Forget starting, just wow. making the team. What, yeah. what would you guys say? Because this is this is consistent. I know a lot of us grew up probably in rough areas, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it be broken households, uh, the, the drug activity, gang activity. Why is it so common for a lot of the people that we grew up with that were very successful in sports, that is, grew up in those environments? You know, it, it's great. You know, I, I would say this, too. My mom and I talk about it. My mom did the best she could with – um raising three kids. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting conversation because sometimes they don't want to feel like they seem like they failed. And I told my mom, she didn't fail. So my mom raised me right. But I used to tell her, I have to leave the house. Mm -hmm. So I see those pimps yep. on the street. I see those drug dealers. <laughs> right, right, I see right. those, no matter what you tell me to do in this house, yeah. I still have to leave this house. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, these are the only areas that we could afford. So it's not like you're trying to put your kids in harm's way. Yep. But if all you can afford is projects, this and that, these are the things that come with poverty. Absolutely. No matter how great of a mother, how great of a grandmother, when you leave that house, yep. you're going to see these things on that street. Yeah. You're going to interact with friends that maybe you grew up with that was ball players. You used mm. to play Little League with you. Yeah. It's now drug dealing. they still your boys because yeah. you don't know them as the drug dealer or the killer. Yeah. It's your homie you used to yep. kick it with, play yep. games with. Absolutely. Now they've chosen that path of life, but you still got to deal with it. So uh, I just think, unfortunately, from an economical sense, a lot of us come from the same economical areas yep. where you have to now deal with those same environments, no matter where you live. What, what are some of the things, uh, this is for you too, Nate, dog. 
when you, when you think about your upbringing, when you know you had to leave the house and yeah. you had to go into those, you know, that that was the area for you. You didn't have to go too far, right? Step outside right. the front door. It, it is what it is out there. What were some of the things that kind of kept you on a straight and narrow or kept you focused, you know, that your mom told you well, for growing me, up? I, I, I was fortunate. My mom and dad, my original mom, they separated, but my dad remarried. So I yeah. had a mother and a father always in nice. the house and my grandmother. There you go. But what, what kept me locked in a lot of times, even though I strayed as I got older, sure. what kept me locked in is because everybody knew Mr. Newton. Mm. He owned the local store. So if I did something wrong, hey, but I'm going to tell you that. So <laughs> that I never, fear. I, fear so kept I, you straight. Yeah, so when I, when I see you guys, man, I, that's why I'm always saying, how do y'all stay humble? Yeah. We just say mom. Yeah. Yeah. Sports saved yeah. my life, no doubt yeah. about it. Yeah. Had I not been in sports, I would have been on the block. Yeah. Because when wow. I wasn't playing, I was on the block. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> right. so for sure, sports saved my life. And then I would say some of the drug dealers and gang members saw I had a chance. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't let me. They're like, nah. Man. Dude, you go home, hey, you know, it's a little different situation. Help, help people understand the community around that. Even though there's such a, obviously there's negatives in, in right. regards to gang, gang banging and mm -hmm. selling drugs and all the things affiliated with growing up in those, uh, you know, poverty stricken neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. But for people that that didn't experience that, they don't get it. Right. They don't get the community aspect of it. And like, why right. would you ever do this? Why would you ever sell drugs? Why would you ever be a gang member? Why, why how different is that than a fraternity? Well, it's, it's the, right? the, 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 I think the unique thing is a lot of those kids, they end up going that route. You knew them in elementary. They wasn't gangbanging. Yep. They wasn't doing drugs. Yep, so they family. played basketball with them in middle school. They wasn't drug dealing. They wasn't gangbanging. These are your, you, you know them as a person. Yeah. At some point along the way, they made a decision. I knew guys in high school um, that was making five ten thousand dollars $10,000 a week selling drugs. <laughs> now, you take a kid from a single family home, poverty stricken, who really don't want to go to school and you can go put five, 10 grand a week. I mean, that's great money in today's time. And when you're, and you, if you were living in straight and narrow, you're probably bringing in what happy to bring in a stack a week. No, no I can tell you this. Uh, I had a job in high school back then. Minimum wage was three thirty five. Mm. So you work in $3 and 35 cents an hour. Right? So imagine uh, that means if you work eight hours, you made what? 28, $29. Yeah. And one, in one handshake can get you 20. There, there you go. So these cats out there said, Hey, you know what? It's, it's real. I'm going to go make this money and this and this and that. And so I understood, but you know them differently. Some people look at them as just monsters. Yeah. You knew Nate when he was an elementary you good dude. You the dude that y'all had sleepovers and yeah. you used to play, play basketball in the backyard. So you don't know him as that <laughs> monster that everybody else sees him as. And so the thing, the yeah. thing about it, if your mom did like your moms did, this is this is when it hits you. This is when it hit me. When I went to school, not the first time I came home because I'm excited to see the fellas, but by my junior, senior year, I'm seeing my guys not advance. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing them hanging up under the tree. We call it the tree, or we call it the shopping center. You know, back crib. Hey man, where you going? Where you going? Hey, see me at the shopping center. Yeah. And you see the same guys. The same girls with the same stories, yeah. and the same. I remember when I was, and I, I heard that like eight times. Well, I'm gonna tell you what changed my life. Oh. I went home once wow. for spring break, and I was with some of my old friends on the block, and we were driving. And never forget this. Uh, my buddy mom had an old BMW. Yeah, her old BMW was made out of steel. Make a long story short, we're on we're on Crenshaw Boulevard. And some guy pulled up, told my guy, my buddy was talking to a girl, but he was backing up traffic. Okay. And some guy pulled up and said, hey, I ain't going to say what they said, cuz, yep. move y'all punk butts out the way, blah, right. blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. My boy said, screw him. They put nine shots in the car. Damn. Right? Yeah, right? So the blessing is nine bullets hit that car and nobody got hit. Wow. Because the car was made of steel. Steel, yes. And I never went, that was the last time I went home. You know, because that's yeah. unlikely for nine bullets. I'm not talking about in the air. Nope. So when we went home, my buddy took his car. We had nine bullets on the side door, almost kind of like the biggie thing and yep. all that. Yep. And nobody got hit. And I said, I just can't. I love these dudes. These my guys. Separation. But I, I have to separate. Mm -hmm. And that point is when I, I separated. What was that? What was that moment for you, Nate? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with y'all. That moment never came. Okay. Until I was a full, full grown man because mm -hmm. football was such a blessing to me till I just took it over to the other world. 
you know, and the way Larry saw it and got away from it, I always hung out on the edges. Mm. You know, so when I changed my life and gave my life to Christ yeah. a lot of years ago, that's when it that's when it hit me. But I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You have NFL players now that won't get away from this life. The Cowboy has. has Boss man fat. Yeah. So, but it's going to come a day. Yeah. See, and that's what makes me love you two guys. When I hear y'all life stories, I'm like, these guys got it. They understood it. Yeah. They got families, and they held on, and they hold, and y'all hold on to yeah. it. Married to the same woman. Married to the same woman. Took me a divorce yeah. and getting another woman before I like. Before I like, hey man, life changes. Yeah. Oh man, that's so beautiful. And the beautiful thing is, yeah. I said the unfortunate part different now. Thugs and all that is glamorized. Yes, you know. Yes. And when I graduated from high school, and it's a and it's a portrayal. Now, it's a versus, portrayal. Versus it's not back reality. then, it was real. And, yes, and, and I don't think these kids... <laughs> That's well, what acting back then. I, I don't think these kids understand. Uh, and I didn't know this until I left and became a man. I thought everybody knew somebody that got killed in high school. Mm -hmm. I had seven friends. I went to seven funerals in my same right, year. Right. So I didn't know that... You know, I thought that was part Normal. of the hood. And, and, and then when I became a father, my kids... My kids have never had a fight. Let yeah. alone know somebody who got killed. Right, right, right. Like, right. you know, so... And I think the unfortunate <laughs> part is the portrayal of that life. Yes. Going to those funerals, seeing those mothers hurt, doing all those things. You know, now 50 Cent with a, 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 a walking around with a vest on, all it looks cool. Yeah. But the, in the real world, it's not cool. Yep. You know, or seeing people. It's real know, ramifications. It's, it's real world. ramifications. Yeah. And I think, unfortunately, in today's time, that has been glamorized. Like, you can get shot and make it. Everybody gets shot. Don't make it. <laughs> no, oh, man. You that's know, real. Th this is that's real stuff. real, man. And so uh, being a gangster has real consequences, yeah. you know. So last story. My son plays at UCLA. Mm -hmm. and I'll, um, forgive, I'll forgive you for that. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I mean. And he has about a million dollars worth of fake jewelry. It's late. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> you can't just go around L.A. No, not anymore. Some young cats may think that's real and jack you. Make a long story short, I just read this past week that a rapper got killed yep. in Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Yep, yep, they right. targeted him and robbed him and killed him. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I understood that. Like when I used to say that to my wife, oh, he's overreacting. It's not like that no more. Oh, that's when you grew up. So when I read this, it touched even closer to home with me. Because, yep. you know, he's young. He's 22 years old. He's driving a car. He looks like got a lot. he had, it's real, even though it's fake. And it just takes the wrong person to think it's real. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Larry. If y'all can get this out, that's fake on Larry's son. All right? <laughs> it is. No doubt about it. So do not rob my fake stuff. Right. But the guy that they killed, they didn't know if his stuff was fake or not. They robbed the guy. And we have been to that Roscoe's. Wow. He has. My wife has. So it, it touches more when you come from where I come from. So I've seen kids killed and this and that. And that right now, they're all there. That was when you grew up. They don't do that no more. No, they You're do. overreacting no, they and do. blah, blah, blah. And that story, this happened this past week, yeah. brought it more closer to me. You know, right. so yeah. yeah, because nowadays, you know, to your point in terms of the portrayal and everybody's trying to look like they have something in social media, right? Social media is making it, is magnifying this a hundred times, a hundred fold. You know, now cats are out there portraying, they're, they're putting out where they're at. I'm here. I'm doing this. This is what I'm wearing. How much money? How much money? How much money you, I got? Yeah, how much money I got? You know, all this stuff. And it's so much easier for somebody to come and just take it from you. Right. Than it is for them to just work for it. And, and this was no accident when this kid got killed. Yeah. They said they followed him and they watched him. Yep. They didn't care. They went into a restaurant. They didn't say, we're going to get them on the way out. They went in and got them. So that's the mentality of some of these cats. So it's real. But all that keeps me humble. All that, yeah. that you made it past all right. that and... And you had friends that didn't, and, you know, from the guys who didn't get killed, the guys I knew that did long prison terms, you know, uh, and putting money on their books for years. And I still would go visit. You know, people would go crazy when I played with the guy. That, Man, you went down and, and this and this and that, and you, you did, you know, because you knew these dudes. Yep. You know, I knew this guy as this person. And a lot of those guys changed their lives, too. Yeah. They were very young. And so now as older men, they realize it, but those consequences – you know, follow you for a minute. Yeah. You know, are wow. you are you guys still seeing that show up? Some of that same behavior that we that we've been able to identify, live through, and, and kind of overcome. Are you still seeing any of those, any of that kind of sneaking into this new generation of of NFL players now? 
You talking about the the, the thugging? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, some guys, yeah. Yes, I'm you gonna have one or two on every team, and and these guys where y'all experienced it, the thuggery, and it was real, and you saying the betrayal. Some guys are really that way. They about that, and they trying to stay undercover. With mm-hmm. it. the true gangster, ain't, ain't trying to be seen, right? You know, because he know his life. Once he leaves the Cowboy Center, yeah. he leaves the uh, Raider place, or he leaves yeah. Raven place. He got real problems. Yeah, he got real problems. Yeah. Because where growing up, some of the gang members in the community say, hey, man, get out of here. Mm-hmm. Some of the gang members are pulling you in. Mm-hmm. They they don't want, they, they lifestyle has changed because your lifestyle has changed. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I, I watch it, man. And I'm watching a few guys to see if they really... You know, because when this thing is over, it's yeah. back to the life. But I also think that there's a difference, Nate, for being a tough guy and a killer. Mm. There's a lot of guys think they tough guys. Yeah. And I had to remind my wife of a gang member. Gang members are not doing community service. No. You make your name on your rep. Yeah, that's so right. So if you ain't beat up, killed, robbed somebody, they're not just going to let you hang out. Yep. They call it putting in work. Yep. That's right. So they, they, if you're a serious gang member, you're going to rob, kill, steal, because you ain't doing community service and going to church. You got to prove, you prove your worth. You got to right. prove your worth. And and, and they're not going to let you hang around too long yeah. without so, but so, you putting in a little work. Yeah. So Larry Brown understands that, but what does Antonio Brown understand? Because now Antonio Brown's running around here thinking that he's a hardcore rapper. and think he's a tough guy. Yeah, huh. He's not a real killer. Nah. And let me tell you this, real killers don't respect cats like that. They, they think it's studio. You see what I'm saying? Your studio. And you know what's so funny, fellas, is it's always going to be a different way of living. Mm-hmm. And we who call ourselves civilized is never going to adapt to that. Are we not going to go back to it? We, we understand it and we respect it. You know, because if we pull up in the wrong area and somebody asks us to move on, we ain't finna ask why. Mm-hmm. They're going to be like, bro, you need to move on. Right. We, hey, cool. 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 Right. But. <laughs> The, the average dude going to want to, you know, try to sit there and philosophize. And before you know it, now you're in a situation that you shouldn't be Absolutely. in. And we need to kind of get off of this call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you're good. So, so, so that's, that's, that's your that's upbringing, right? From. That's, that's where you come from. So, yeah. so help us now with the, the Larry Brown that, that has an opportunity to go, you know, 12th round pick and goes out there to the Cowboys. Now what is your mentality as you get drafted and you step into Cowboys yeah. Nation? Um, so I've always enjoyed playing football. Okay. So I, I loved it. I love going to pro. I love competing. So um, when I got to the Cowboys, truth the true story, I was disappointed. I said, God, I said, I said, thank God for here's the power of God. Right. I said, Lord, you must don't like me. <laughs> I said, I didn't win in college. Yeah. And I don't care what level or what city or what state. When you lose, ain't nobody happy. Mm-mm. Little right. league, high school, college. Mm-mm. So I didn't win in college. We had a lot of coaching changes. And now I'm going to the worst team in the NFL. Mm. And they were one of 15. <laughs> I said, I'm never going to have any fun. Yeah. Now, I had won all the way up from Little League until I got to college. Okay. Right. So I didn't know what it felt like yeah. to lose. Yeah. And that was hard. Right, right. You know? So I'm like, man, never went to a bowl game. Never won more than five games. Uh, new coach this year. New coach next year. And now I'm going to the Cowboys. They won in 15. <laughs> and back, everybody wasn't around. Nate was there, but he knows. Yeah. When they was one in 15, I mean, imagine the Cowboys won Nobody was there. The that. Heat. And the noise and the abuse and all that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so you can imagine. You couldn't go nowhere. And then they had fired Tom Landry. Oh, my God. It was crazy. Yeah. Right. It was crazy. I'm like, man. They, it's wouldn't, not... they wouldn't even hold the door open for you, huh? Man, it was just, <laughs> it wasn't a team you said, I want to go play for. Half the fans said they'd never go to a Cowboy game because of Tom Landry. Okay. They were 1-15. A lot of trade. They had just made a trade, got rid of Herschel, and it was a lot going on. Right. So you're not thinking you're going to a winning situation okay. at all. So, but when I got there, and then that, that competition comes in, and you want to prove you belong, mm-hmm. you know, so that, that competitive side now kicks in, and, 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 and I was very naive. I, when I got to Cowboys, I was only 20 years old. People don't realize that. So even though I played with Kevin and Darren Woodson, they were still older than me, gotcha. even though they came in the next year. Gotcha. So, um, so I was young, naive, didn't know nothing about the business, didn't know how to operate. Even when I made the team, I didn't know if I made the team or not. Mm. So no one came to me and said, you made the team. So I remember talking to my boy James Washington. I said, well, did I make it? He said, did they come ask for your playbook? 
I said, no. He said, well, shit, you here. <laughs> I said, okay. Okay. So even when I made the team, I was all on special teams. I was on every special yep. teams. I didn't know I was going to start. So no one prepared me and said, hey, we're thinking about doing this, doing that. Coach came to me one day out of the blue and said, you're starting this week. I didn't even remotely think. I never even thought about starting at all. Yeah. So it was a lot going on for a young guy. And now that I'm older – I could you could have saw more coming, yeah. but back then I was so young and naive. I was just like, trying to play every day. I'm gonna tell you, you forgot this. Tell him what Jimmy told you before preseason game. How you been, uh, yeah, so Jimmy <laughs> came life to me. Change I'm talking um, about. Jimmy came to me one last preseason games. Uh, he was in the locker room. I'm sitting in my locker. He walks by my locker. He walks back. We're playing the Oilers. Okay. Uh, and this is a game where you're gonna play like quite a bit to get you ready. Right. They changed it now. They don't do that. But back then, you played at least one or two games to kind of get guys ready. Yeah. And he walked back. He said, hey, I'm going to make a decision after this game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of the corner. Hey, I'm balling. I'm knocking things down. I'm making all kinds of plays. And uh, so, but I, I was okay with that. You know, when you come from nothing, yep. that stuff don't move you. Right. I done seen people killed. People right. Right. So, okay, you're going to make a decision on me. And I told myself, if you cut me, and I said my mind, I'm about you crazy because yeah. I'm a ball. Yeah. Right, you see what I mean? Right. That that was just my mindset. Mentality, yeah. And so uh, went out and, and played well and had a good game and you know that was it. And then that same person though came to me the second game of my rookie season. He said, "I'm starting you this week." That's right. He said, "I know you can do it. Don't let me down." So Jimmy Johnson gave me a career, an opportunity yeah. Yeah. to have a career. So I've always loved Jimmy. He was people think he's hard, but he was fair. He was always fair. How, how important was that for somebody, for a coach, at least in his position, to, to have faith and belief in you at the well, time of your Well, the career? interesting thing about it, back, they never treated me like they had faith in me. Yeah. They just did stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, so when we drafted my boy Kevin Smith, who a, 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 was a great player for us, they worked Kevin in, got him some nickel reps, right. brought him along. You know, they made sure he that they – first pre- round pick. He was a first-round pick. Round pick. <laughs> no, they, pre- they protected him. So, yeah, they protected him, right. yeah. You get out there. Cater. You better do good. Yeah. You know, so, you know, when you're young, you don't know no better. So they never treated me like that. I remember Dave Campbell, uh, our DB coach, one time. We're sitting in film, and, you know, every time a, a top-round pick did something, they said, good job. Mm-hmm. I'm balling. I'm not playing everybody. <laughs> right? So after about two weeks, I'm in the film room. I said, and I did so good. I said, Coach, I did good on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I want some love, too. He said, Larry Brown, I'm not going to tell you good job every time you do something good. So you know what I said? My mentality. I'm going to go out to practice and kill some people. I'm going right. to make you. So I went out, and I'm balling, I'm balling. They have to say, good job, Larry Brown. Good job, Larry Brown. Because, you know, my mentality is I'm going to make you. Yeah. If you're yeah. not going to acknowledge, yeah. I'm going to go do what I got to do. Absolutely. So, yeah. Let, let me Let me – <laughs> this is one thing Coach Johnson always did. Like, he he's preparing you. His coaches are always preparing you. Mm-hmm. They've already talked about it. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, but Jimmy gonna always be the one to say, hey, mm-hmm. this is what we're gonna do. He had a way of looking at players and didn't coach you for what people thought you was. He coached you for what he wanted you to be. Mm-hmm. Right. He wanted Larry to be a player. He saw his talent. So he started coaching him and treating him like, hey, this is what I expect. This is so what I expect. You know, he came to me and you going to play right tackle. you one of the best five. I'm like, he did not ask me. Mm-hmm. I was a four or five-year veteran. You right tackle. you one of the best five. Kevin Golden can't do it. This guy can't do it. You can do it. I'm like, well, coach, he said, you know what? The only discussion we're going to have is you either going to do it or you're going to be off the team. <laughs> All right, coach, I'm your right tackle. Do it, he, he like, believed. Yeah. So that gave you a confidence, man. That's awesome. Well, he explained to Nate that we didn't have confidence. <laughs> Wasn't no back and forth. And, and then maybe Nate, Nate was a veteran. I was a young guy yeah, young right. who could also be controlled more, who didn't right. know the business uh, as Rod well. I knew the business, Larry, but it wasn't, Jim, at that point, you know, Jimmy didn't care. True. Because he saw what the big picture was. Well, I think Jimmy did two things when I got there. He kept the veterans he wanted. Yes. Like Nate, who right. were great. And he got rid of the ones he didn't. That's right. And then he put all these young guys like myself and Alvin and Russell and all these guys in who he could try to control. He said, hey, because we didn't know no better. You know, we didn't know, 
You know, I, I remember when I first got there, I tell Nate all the time, the league has changed so much. The old veterans are not like veterans today. Yeah. When I got there, cats were sitting in, uh, in the locker playing cards before a game. I'm coming in like, they're like, dude, it's a long year. I'm all amped up like college yeah. and ready to go. You didn't realize you're a pro now. It's a process of this thing. Um, and, you know, some cats had cigarettes. You know, but some I'm, guys had like a little mixed drink. I'm like, they can drink before, man. you know, you know, depends on where you are. I had well, all my pads in, right? So, what's the craziest thing you saw somebody do in pregame? We say crazy, like just the fact out of the ordinary, there, out of the ordinary. Somebody sitting there drinking a mixed drink before a game was crazy to me. Uh, I had all my pads in back because in college they made you wear all your pads. Yeah, absolutely. I had a cup, hip. They snatched all that out. <laughs> that was me when I got there. The dude said, "Hey, man." Uh, Isaac Holt said, man, when the last time you've been in a hip, hitting the hip? Take that shit out. He pulled my <laughs> yeah, hip pads yeah, out, yeah. my butt pad out. So I didn't know that, you know, back then they didn't wear pads nope, in their have. pants. Nope. You know, so that's how the veteran <laughs> cats did it. So for a young guy coming out of college, mixed drinks, cigarettes, no pads and pants, that was absolutely Shock. crazy. Mainly yeah. defensive guys. Uh you know, didn't Offense wear. Offense a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more. You, but you guys didn't wear no. Somebody's hitting somebody receiving hit hits. What you need a thigh pad for on defense when you've been hitting the thigh? Yeah. You know, so. Um, That's funny. They've changed the rules now and they make you put that stuff in. But back then. Nah, no. You know what, though? You, you just didn't never look good. <laughs> Larry was a bad built dude in a uniform, man. Matt, you just trying to make the team. Larry hey. did, but I'm saying he didn't hey. care. But I you didn't time, care, but know he tried to get, you know, he tried to tighten his uniform. He just you swagging know, out a little you bit. Know, when you're young, your uniform loose. Yeah. You know? yeah. But you know why? See, Nate don't tell the truth. <laughs> Back then, a vet can go ask for what he wants. Absolutely. Right? Here, these are your shoulders. Yeah, this is what you got. Yeah, this is what you got. Hey, I want some more. I want some Make it work. One. So the truth of the matter, it is. Yeah. Once I made the team became a starter, right. I went and got smaller shoulder pads. <laughs> but back then, you can't ask for anything. And That's when, facts. You, when you come in, when I came in, I don't know if they do that anymore. You knew the guys was going to be on the team. It said Nate Newton, nameplate. Yeah. Troy Aikman. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Irvin. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't share lockers. When we came in, you shared a locker and your yep. name was on tape. Yep. And I asked the guy, I said, well, why did they have tape for some guys? He said... Because if a guy don't make it, they just pull it off and throw it away. They got right. all this time making the plate. So right. your whole mindset. Absolutely. Different. You know? I remember. And, and they, they knew they were there. Oh, they yeah. come in. They Chilling. laughing. They sit in their locker. They all comfortable, stressed out. Three of us sharing one locker. <laughs> I remember it. But you remember Jimmy used to have a, for a few years, Jimmy used to have uh, guys coming in on Mondays and Tuesdays mm -hmm. working out bad. Oh, yeah. Well, I tell the story about Leon Lett. I'll let it go on this one. Leon, so in training camp, we used to back then we trained in Austin. They had two dorms, two dorm buildings. Yeah. All the guys for sure was in that dorm. The rest of us was over here. Mm -hmm. So back then you could bring 140 guys to camp. That's right. You know, back then it was a lot. So our dorm was full. So whenever a guy got released on the floor, door opens, mm -hmm. they clean the room up, there. Yeah. So we're going over, you know, back then camp, camp was like seven weeks. So we finally get down to the last cut. Every door is open except two. So I don't know <laughs> how it was timing or what. So I open my door, look down the hallway. I see Leon Lett. He look at me. We both run back in, close our door. <laughs> so they kept me and Leon in that dorm yeah. for another week, just the two of us, before they eventually moved us over wow. to yeah. that thing. But that's how they did you back then. It's like it wasn't personal. Yeah. It, it was... If you can't be humble from those experiences and those things like that, and then, you know, once we, once I did establish myself in the friendships like Nate and those guys, we were all close. Like, we had a, our, our positions during camp. We'd get food one day a week. Monday was a lineman. Tuesday was DBs. Yeah. We'd come in, man. We got buckets of chicken all right. on the floor. Yeah. It was a friendship. Beer, it was a bond. Bro. You know, so. Wow. The fact that you get, I mean, how could you not? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, how awesome. could you not? That's awesome, man. That's yeah. dope. Well, man, you do that. You go through that. You play with the Cowboys. You guys end up going there to the Super Bowl. You grab you one of them rings. You get an MVP. Um, well, we got we got three rings before I left. You got three rings. My father, no yeah. disrespect. Yeah, no disrespect. Left. I only got one. Y'all got three over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got you got you got your rings. You get MVP. And you go out there. You get a contract. Okay, mm -hmm. you lead the lead organization. You get a contract, and then you know your career ends up going away. And then how do you transition? 
from football to business life now? It's great because um, football taught me a lot. Uh, when I got drafted, the Cowboys was all I knew. So how someone runs an organization, how people coach, how they prepare you. I didn't know what a bad organization looked like. When I got to the Cowboys, I didn't get a chance to experience the bad part because hmm. Jimmy was turning around. Yes, sir. You know, Nathan went through yes, some sir. things. Interrupt her. But yeah. so for me, it was good. Like we had great coaches. They got you ready. They got you all those things. I didn't know that players didn't like each other on other teams because I never experienced that with our guys. Got you. So when I went to uh, the Raiders, it was just totally different. I was like, wow, I didn't know it was even like this. Guys don't hang out. Guys don't like each other. Guys are jealous of Culture each other. Culture shock. It's worse than that. Yeah. Because you <laughs> it's never worse. Than, yeah. it's worse than that. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know it exist. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So you see what I mean? Right. It's one thing to be shocked by yeah. something. It's nothing that you didn't know it exists. You're living in the Truman Show. We, we didn't yeah. have that. You know, just from talking about from people, no one treated you like that. Um, those guys didn't hang out. They weren't friends. They were jealous. Uh, some guys would be asking you week one, hey, man, you know, uh, uh, we're about to get that car shipped home. It's week two. You're talking about getting your car. That's what, People did that at the end of the season. So, you know, it, that, was, that was rough for me. Okay. But it made me humble, and it helped me look at life a little different, that life isn't always the way you expect it to go. Our life isn't all the way to, it's going, what you think it is. And people aren't always the way you think it is. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it was uh, interesting. I was just happy that I had a chance to play with the guys I did. Yeah. Outside of winning the game, the people, the people. And because I never I had never played on a team, and I'm not calling those guys bad guys. No, it's just different. But I have never played from Little League, high school, where they were like that. Hmm. Like, wow. So that really humbled me more and, and made me appreciate the people that I that I did it with. And, and, and see – this is how deep it was, Isaiah, for us. Hey, man, I'm having a party. And the party wasn't for me. The party was for my son, for my third, Nathaniel yeah. Newton III. Everybody showed sure. up from Troy, Mr. Jones, or he's son of representative. Wow. You know, if Larry was having something, opening something, we showed up. Yeah, it was a family. Yeah, it, it was It was, It was. was truly a family. So I, I'm, I'm understanding it totally. Because when I went to the, to the uh, Panthers that one year, they were good and they were close, but it was like, wow, mm-hmm. dudes, you know, biting back, backbiting and everything. And, and and even if I said I didn't like Troy, it was utmost respect. So if he was having something, I was there. Mm-hmm. Man, guys, you go to other teams, you'd be like, they like that. man, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got nothing for him. Sure. I'm like, what? And, it, and we knew each other. Yeah. I knew Dorothy. Yeah. His wife. I used to hold Trey yeah. when he was a little kid. This That's is right. He knew I knew each Alvin. Other. Alvin from Frog Food, Florida. I know he's from. Yeah. Deion from Fort Myers, Florida. What's you our knew these name? Uh, your best friend. AD. AD. Adrian. We, his Bagley. Boy. He named Bagley. John Bagley. Bro. Bagley. That's what yeah. I know him as. AJ Bagley. Bagley. We, we knew, knew each, each other. other. Yeah. So when you was awesome. on that field, Brothers. I'm playing for Nate. Mm. Yeah. Nate is telling me to LB, hey, hey, make a play. Yeah. It ain't, hey, man, why you talking to me? Hey, don't say that to me. Yeah. Don't be saying that to me. You, you going to make a play. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know? It's different. Yeah. And it was okay. Yeah. Even with Dion, I love playing with Dion. Uh, Dion, you know, I would, if I need to make a play, hey, you need me to come over there? No, nah, I got it. Hey, Dion, <laughs> hey, you, you need me to come over there? Hey, yeah. what, you need me? Yeah. Hey, hey, they come, this day, they come over here again. I'm going to take the next one to the house. Yeah. You could talk like that. Yeah. This is a huddle. Yeah. So there was no, the accountability and the friendship the respect, yeah. allowed us to to play. Like, okay, yeah. I got you. Wow. I got you. So, and your guys, when I got MVP, Emmett, Dion, I don't know if I ever told you a story. Yeah, no, right? you did. So, we're, we're at the Super Bowl. And I don't know how I ended up, ended up in a room with all this dude. But I probably was hanging out with Dion, make a long story short. is Emmett, Michael, Dion, and myself. Dion's pissed off because Disney ain't raised the money. Uh, for the Super Bowl thing about 30 years. Right, right. So he's like, look, anybody in this room get MVP, hey, tell them you ain't doing the commercial unless we raise the money. Right. So he says, Mike, are you in? Mike, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Mike, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, Emmett, <laughs> okay, you know, whatever. Larry, I'm blowing them off. Hey, whatever, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'll be, yeah, 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 so yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Pay no different. So when I get the MVP, Dion, Mike, I'm looking at me like this. Because Disney talking to me. Yeah. 
So they said, well, <laughs> so I said, you, why would they put me in this position? Yeah. I'm not them. <laughs> I'm I, saying this in my head. I need this bread, man. Them. So Disney said, can you do it? I said, are you guys going to raise the money? Right? And I blame Prime on this one. I really blame Prime because I shouldn't have listened to him. Right, right. <laughs> you know, we rolled in at that time. It's my dude. And I said, y'all going to raise the money? They said, no. And uh, I said, I can't do it. Hmm. Right? Now, I understand I probably regret the decision. Right. Because I'm not prime. Yeah. Right, and I'm right. not Emmett. Yeah. Right, right. Go do the Disney thing. Right. But I, because I got caught up in a room yep. where I probably shouldn't have been during that conversation. <laughs> I ended up not. And then Emmett up selling out doing the Disney thing. Yeah, he did. No, he yeah, yeah, yeah. ended up doing it. I mean, and Deion and Mike was mad at that. And he ended up doing it. And they were a little pissed at that. But but I honored the word. But I appreciated Deion and those guys because that's what it was about. It yeah. wasn't that, hey, I'm bigger than you. Yeah. Hey, you are part of this conversation. You see what I mean? That's the respect you have teammates. They're gonna say, hey man, they could have just asked them three and been about their own business. If I'd have been in the room, they would have asked them three. They wouldn't ask yeah, them. Been, <laughs> been, you know, that's the last thing you think. First of all, you already know you think quarterback, running back, you're not thinking defensive guy. And if it is a defensive guy, maybe Haley, maybe Dion, yeah. you're not thinking yeah. that part of it. But that just shows you the closeness that they didn't treat you like you were different, mm. that you wasn't no less. You could tell Dion, you need me to put that fire out? He wasn't mad. It's that accountability. Or Charles, hey, hey, man, get a pass rush. Okay, if I get a pass rush, y'all better make a play. Yeah. It wasn't that. It's different. You know? Now we got disrespected as an offense because the offense was everything. And they, oh, they was our everything. defense would cuss us out. Mm. We if they get an interception or they get a turnover, that's why you see me go crazy out yep, there. Yep, yeah. You know, when we're doing our shows, yep. I'm like, these dudes just got an interception or a turnover, and our right. offense did not get seven. We could you not walk to that side that sideline safe. All the stars were on offense. Yeah. <laughs> Nate Newton, no. Larry Allen, no. Stepnoski, <laughs> Daryl Johnston, Jay Novacek, Emmitt Smith, Michael Irvin, <laughs> Troy Aikman. That's all the stars. Seven Pro Bowl. Truthfully, <laughs> the only true star right. that was out there was Charles Haley. Right. The other guys made names for themselves. Guys, like right. Woody became star. They right. made names. But they had everybody. I'm going to tell you how bad it was for them. True story. I don't know if you know this. They even remember this. And this pissed me off. <laughs> Normally, we went to three Super Bowls. Yep. They never announced the defense. Uh, they announced the offense every time uh, because they didn't want to change that deal. So, you know. It was, it was a working recipe for Oh, us. man. I, under, I undercut them, though. One year, Jimmy was really thinking about it. I heard him talking to the coaches. Man, we got to get the defense in there. We got to get the defense in there. And I undercut y'all. It's okay. <laughs> I, asked coach, I asked Coach Johnson. I said, Coach, he said, I don't want coaches superstitious. Yeah. He said, I don't want to break what works. Yeah. So, because I asked him, why we didn't get the defense? Uh-huh. You know, but uh, so three Super Bowls. You know, Ed Gord, Nate yep. New Bella, and Nate out of style. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, what, what, your dance, what was your dance, Nate? What was your dance? Oh, I used to come up clapping everybody yeah, yeah. down low. But ah, you know. <laughs> well, let me say this right here, man. I had to cut them. <laughs> I heard them. I said, Coach, you need to stay with us. That's the awesome. Things are rolling. That's and that's dope. why we expected them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to do what they did. Yeah. When, and they were great, truthfully. They were great. I mean, I don't think people even understand, you know, I'm a fan of the sport. You got to stay who we have on our line. Mm-hmm. Nate Newton, yeah. Stepnoski, Larry Allen, Ron Kevin Stone, Gary, Kevin, Kevin Golgan. Yeah. I don't think people even understand uh, that. And I tell Nate, I, Nate don't even remember this story one time, right? We're, in a, we're doing inside run. And as DBs, whenever we play a team that has tight ends and you're going to be in run support, yeah. they bring some corners down there. You got backside C. So we're probably, so one time Nate, Nate banged up. And I'm like, damn, Nate holding the drill up like Nate. So I said, uh, Nate, get up. He wobbled. I said, man, why don't you take a couple plays off? Nate looked at me and said, have you seen Larry Allen? Yeah. <laughs> they went right back to the huddle. Because yeah. back then, no matter what position you played, you weren't giving your backup your no, reps. No, no. You remember, Darren Wilson didn't start. Leon Lett didn't start, right. you know, at those times. Yeah. I'm not giving – Yep. These guys, my back, because they could play. And you might not get it back. Jimmy Smith didn't start. That's Kevin right. Williams didn't start. The right. I'm not giving these dudes my backup. So they like, want to come up? No, no, no. You're good. It's so different from now. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so different from now. You it's know? crazy. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what, Meg? Can we get five minutes of yes. what you think about these Cowboys? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, I think uh, the Cowboys have to figure out what they are. Tell you why. They built this team several years ago around the offensive line. <laughs> hey, we're going to come in, build this line, run the ball, build it around Zeke. And, you know, they're one of the best offensive lines in the game at that right. time. Well, they're not that anymore. So what are you? Are you going to be a passing team? Are you going to be a running team? Because they did build it around running that football. They had an identity. And controlling <laughs> the line of scrimmage and all that. So now I think that every team, great team, has an identity of what they are, not what they want to be. Yep. Because they didn't want to be a good running team. They were a very good running team. And I said this before. It wasn't even about Zeke. Uh, DeMarco Murray led the league in Russia. Yep. Right. When McFadden took over during the time he played, he led the league in Russia. Right. Zeke came in. So that was who they were. Well, that's not what you are now. So until you decide offensively, what are we? Or what can we be, I guess? Yes, I don't know if they can be that same dominant team up front the way that they were. But they got to figure it out. And I don't think that they've quite figured that thing out as well. Secondly, I think at the receiver group, um, you have to figure out what you can do. I thought C.D. Lamb was a very good receiver. He's going to have a great career. But they never asked him to be a one. So now I'm pushing you over there. And if you're not doing it, I can't be mad at you. You know what I mean? Because right. you can be a great solid two, this and this and that. And I've always said that we talked about this before. A real true one, you have to game plan around. Mm. Like Michael Parsons. You're just not running stuff. You're saying he's out there. You're putting yep. game plan around this guy. So I thought Amari Cooper losing to Amari, I thought that hurt them. In a major way. You know, in a major way. Right. Be because wow. for two reasons. When you understand what Amari did, he didn't cry about the ball. He didn't complain. But he quietly gave you 11, 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns every year. And the plays he made were explosive plays. Yep. Right. It wasn't just, I got 1,100 yards. So now you took that explosiveness out the offense. Yep. You're not able to run the ball the way you want to. Uh, Gallup's been hurt. He's a very good player. And now you're saying, hey, third-year rookie, a young guy, go be our number one guy. And so um, I just think from an identity standpoint, they have to decide what they're going to be. Uh, if you take Kansas City, Kansas City's a passing team. They, they'll throw it 40 times in a row. They don't care. Right. They're not traditional. Like we got to run mm -hmm. there. We got balance here. They do. That's what they are. We're going to live and die mm -hmm. on Mahomes' arm. Wow. And that's what we are. That's what we do. So I just think that they have to figure out what that is. I think that they their expectations, we want to run the ball. But I just don't think they have those guys yeah. that can just line up and just whip you right. down in and down out, you know. And so I think they have to figure that out, that identity. What are you offensively? Before we hop off the air, mm -hmm. do they win the NFC East? No. Ooh, no. And it's not personal. You know. This is facts. Yeah. I, I've always said this. I love Dak. But if you look at Dak, and I'm not blaming all him, like I have some buddies that are huge Cowboy fans, and they hate me when I say this. As a player, and they don't do this, we all evaluate ourselves. If I didn't play good, like when I didn't play good, I go home, nobody talked to me for that, it. I needed a day dude. just to get my mind wrapped around that. <laughs> and and what I consider playing bad today ain't playing bad. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> All right, though, for real. You understand that? It's different thing. So, yeah, so I had to, to do this. But um, if you look at Dak, the thing I'm disappointed with Dak is against bad teams, he plays well. Against good teams, for whatever reason, he struggles. For whatever reason. And, um, and I'm not saying that the team don't contribute. I'm just assessing him. As the leader of that team, as the highest paid guy on that team, to me – you got to find a way. You, the quarterback makes it go. The reason we played well, we knew number eight. No matter what it was, he could make that throw. He could make that play. It don't matter how down and out we were. That, And especially in big games. Mm. Okay, And when I look at their success, they did it against the greats. They did it against Bruce Smith and those great Buffalo teams. They get against Bryant and those 49er teams. Yes. It wasn't just bad teams. They did Green Bay with Reggie the Green White. Bay with Reggie White, Philly with Jerome Brown, Brown and all them boys. So when I measure a team that's good, like King, how do you do against good teams? Yeah. Don't tell me how you beat up on Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you threw for four thousand yards, but you lost to these guys here. So I, I want him to be able to play his best games yeah. in the <laughs> biggest games, and, and that should be the expectation. 
You know, now, does he have the ability? I don't know. But I just if you look at his career, good teams, you know, he doesn't seem to, you know, hit quite throws or sure. make things play the same way. And yep. I thought even last week before he broke his thumb, it wasn't like he was playing great. And I'm not saying that to criticize Dak. I like Dak. So it's on field. But, but that's that's the expectation, yeah. you know, and, and that's what you hope. So okay. I don't think they win the, uh, uh, the, the East. And I think also from a coaching standpoint, I don't think the leadership's there, meaning this. One thing Jimmy reminded us of, and we always go back to Jimmy, that what the old Cowboys did had nothing to do with you. That's right. You ain't won nothing. Right. You got to make your own legacy. You see what I mean? I know. So living off what other guys did doesn't help. And But I think that starts with coaching and, and not just verbally saying it, how I coach, yeah. how you go about these guys. Yeah. I don't see that out of McCarthy. <laughs> And then I don't want to hear any political correct answer after every game. You know, I heard Dak say something and it very it disappointed me. He said about a year ago, he said, if losing was the worst thing that happened here, I, I can, I'll be, I don't want to hear that out of yeah. my quarterback. <laughs> no, not out of my quarterback. I, I totally not, agree. Not that. I don't know if There's, you remember that statement. I remember that statement. Yeah. And Nate knows that I stay on all these guys yeah. about accountability. Yeah, but 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 that but that competitiveness that you were talking about when you have a bad day when you have a bad I coaches used to have to get on me at practice about hey 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 pick your head up because like I would be in my own head about why why did I just make that decision why didn't I do this you know what I'm, saying? I'm I'm running it through my head so many different scenarios about how I could have done something differently to have a better result and I don't know that that's consistent now at least with this team this is what gets me mm -hmm. is I would never ever. This is what haunt me for the. Is I prided myself on low left, mm -hmm. but when we didn't do that thing against Philly, even though we won the Super Bowl that year, mm -hmm. oh, did you? The I, I still to this day the first thing I think about low left man, if we'd have just got that, mm -hmm. it, it's like if you don't feel yep. that loss or you don't feel that disappointment. You know, wow, yeah, and, and mean it. The part that disappointed me was he was honest. What came out was inside. That statement that you made, right. that's what was in you. That's what you feel. And if you felt that if losing this game is the worst thing, I could be okay, that's our leader. That's our quarterback. That's the guy that has <laughs> to make the ship go. That's the guy. Right. And, and and so for me, sometimes you are who you are. And and I'm not saying this to bash Dak. I'm not saying to say he's bad. It's a statement he made. We say, well, you, you are who we thought you were. Yeah, you know, you're like, man, like, why would you, you know, yeah. And, and let me tell you this last story, and I'll, we'll get out of here. We're on the plane one time coming back from a game. Right. And I don't know if you may remember. We were like 11 and 1, just lost the game. And back then, you know, we back, we're gambling, this mm -hmm. and this. And Jimmy comes back. And look at everybody. He's like, do you guys know something that I don't know? We're like, like hey, Jimmy been drinking. What's up with him? Do you know something? We just got our ass kicked. And you're back here playing cards, oh, laughing, boy. this, this. Remember, that's when he got in the front. Remember him in front? Bro, let me, but, but, let, you, yeah. let me tell you something. So, I tried to tell everybody because I was at the front. <laughs> yeah, we're chill out. I tried. I saw <laughs> Jimmy coming and you. Furious. This is when you know he mad. Mm -hmm. When he go, I said, hey, hey, Frank, chill. Da, da, da. Y'all chill. Well, Frank had not really never experienced Furious. Jimmy in a loss. Because right. Jimmy was up there drinking his life. He had had his full of lights, and he was coming back because we back there screaming, hollering. We played cardboard. Yeah, we we yeah. eleven and one. We yeah. just lost though. We lost, and I said, Frank, Frank. And so when we got back there, I'm like, Frank. And so Frank's still playing, laughing. Yep. And Jimmy looked at him because you know I'm sitting there looking straight. So Jimmy looked at him, and Frank like, you know, and stepped doing his thing. And Jimmy like, Hey man, shut up, look straight ahead, and he went on back. And Frank said. Bless his heart, he's no longer with us. Frank said, I'm a man, nobody gonna speak. I said, Frank, right. mm -hmm. Frank, 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 he'll cut you. Just leave it alone, leave it alone. We'll get past this. No, 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 no. So I got Frank calm. Jimmy went to the back, he came back, and we kind of looked at Frank. You all right? So he's like, Yeah, he kind of looked at Frank, like, Yeah. Because Jimmy knew that mm -hmm. Frank was gonna challenge him. Yeah. yeah, and so he went on up. <laughs> Boy, that was a sad time because he kind of, you know, he touched your manhood, bro. And so, yeah. I, wow. The, the point of the that. message was, yes. I didn't realize this till after my career was. Yeah. 
The point was the moment you're okay with losing, yes. where it don't bother you, yes. when you're treating it like it's not, I didn't realize at that point, I thought you had been drinking, okay? yeah. but once my career was over and you, know, you, you step back and think about it, you don't ever get to a point where you're okay with losing if you're trying to win championships. Mm. You're treating it like it's nothing. You're okay with it. You can just get past yes. it that quick. We just left. We went two hours from the field on the plane, and you telling me this is how y'all. So I understand it now, <laughs> right? And that goes back to the Dak thing. You're on a press conference right after the game. If you're talking about this, if this is the worst thing that can happen, you're okay. That means that losing don't. You you can be okay with losing some games. Like, we we got to get out of here. I know we got to get out of here. I got to say one thing. Remember me? Go ahead. And he he never changed. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Jimmy Jimmy told us one time we 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 lost the game, and he just looked at us. We was in the locker room. He said, "And hold on to it. Yeah. I don't never want y'all to ever think it's okay. Hold on to this feeling." Mm -hmm. We had lost to somebody. It was a, mm -hmm. it was a dog fight. Mm -hmm. It was a dog fight. It was one of the bigger teams, the 49ers, yeah. or Green Bay, or somebody. Hold he hold on to it, and I hope it drives you to do extra this week. Mm -hmm. The next yeah. team paid a hell of a fight. We beat Ooh, the yeah, dog. Yeah. You know, but that, that was it. the whole point of it. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't accept losing. Nope. Yeah. Don't be okay with it. And, and I know guys verbally say I'm good, but I, I didn't understand that moment yeah. till later. That we we didn't, you know, we just lost one game. We like it's just one game. What's the big yeah. deal? Even the moment you lose that edge yep. when you get Accept comfortable it. in that feeling right there. Wow. Yep. So yeah. Well, hey man, y'all just got a bunch of knowledge from some from from two dudes that were very, very Three successful. Dudes, man. Yeah, that, that what they do. Uh I'm sitting here just basking in it. Uh, but thank you. No, nah, uh, enjoy the it, LB man. for coming back, through, man. man. Your boy back. Absolutely. Yeah. We have to bring you back. No doubt. Uh, let, let me tell you something. Go ahead, Nate. <laughs> I knew if I got this dude talking. Yeah, uh, I knew I had to just turn it over because he wasn't going. You know, he wasn't going. <laughs> we're going to let two people, three people talk. So no, I just you let good. you. I love hey. the game. I'm a fan. <laughs> no, I'm hey. a fan of you. We're we going to get you back out I'm here. I'm a fan of Nate. So yeah. you're talking to a guy that's a fan of the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah. Hey, thank you all for tuning in again. It's another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Y'all check us out next time. Well. <laughs>